Today I'll be sharing with you all my yarn shopping experience in Oslo, Norway. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knit. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today I'll be sharing with you my weekend trip that I took to Oslo recently. So a couple weeks ago, me and some of my coworkers flew over to Oslo, which was really fun. We spent a long weekend there, Friday through Sunday, and I did a lot of yarn shopping as well as other sightseeing. So I'll be sharing with you all my itinerary, the yarn shops that I went to, and sharing a little bit about prices, VAT refunds, and all that good stuff. If you're new here, I am originally from the U.S. I <laughs> originally, I still am from the U.S. I am just in Europe for a temporary work assignment, and so I've been using my weekends free to visit some other cities and countries that I haven't been to. So I've never been to Oslo before, and I was super excited to go because as a knitter, and if you are into yarns, you know that Scandinavia and Norway is very into knitting. There are a lot of big yarn brands that come from Norway and Scandinavia itself, the neighboring countries like Denmark and Sweden. So I was really excited as a knitter to go to Oslo, and as soon as I Googled yarn stores in Oslo, the list of results just kept going. There are so many and I really strategically mapped out my weekend so I could try to hit as many as possible. I did that by pinning them all on Google Maps so that I could visually see which ones are close, which ones are far, and then I sort of built my weekend itinerary around those yarn stop locations. So I unfortunately didn't get to all the yarn stores in Oslo, but I think I hit most of the big ones. A lot of you guys did send me some recommendations, so thank you for that. And we'll just start with the beginning, Friday afternoon. <laughs> so Friday after we landed from the airport, we went straight into the Centrum area of town, which is just the center downtown area. Area. Lots of shopping, lots of restaurants, just a nice area to walk around and as a first-time visitor really get acquainted with the city. Now in that area you'll find Frukvist as well as Som Center. So the first store that I stopped into was Som Center, which actually translates to the sewing center and this was, as it was described, a sewing store but they also carried some yarn. They had a brand I've never heard of before called Dal Yarns and they also had Roma Garn. Both of those brands I believe are from Norway. They had a very large selection of different colors and fibers and I also saw some other brands there such as Rowan and House of Yarn. Now I don't sew so I don't really know much about what you would want to find in a sewing store but they definitely seem to have a lot of sewing notions and tools. It wasn't really fabric. I don't think I saw a lot of fabric. It was mostly sewing accessories, machines, zippers, buttons, threads, and stuff like that. So that was a nice first stop to go to. I actually didn't end up purchasing anything at that store, but I was really happy to stop in. Now, right around the corner from that store is Frukvis, which was highly recommended for me to visit, and it's super easy to get to as long as you're in that downtown area of Oslo. They had so many different brands, including Philpolana, Isaiah, Bichet Bouche, Gepard, Noro. They had Netting for Olive, although they only carried the pure silk. And they also had a ton of notions and it was also kind of a gift shop you know not everything was knitting related they had some cute gifty things i saw some puzzles and other toys they had a huge book selection pattern selection they had a ton of petite knit accessories and patterns that you could buy there so it was a knitter's dream and that was my first encounter with gepard garn in person i had not been able to try gepard garn yet so i knew i wanted to get some so it was at the store i made my first purchase and i've been eyeing the T number one pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear, which she uses the Gepard Wild and Soft and the Gepard Cashmere Lace. So I went in really wanting that navy combo that My Favorite Things Knitwear uses in her sample piece, but unfortunately they didn't have that in stock, which at first I was disappointed, but I was like, all right, that's okay. We'll just, we'll just pick another color. We'll branch out. I kind of wanted to stick with the blues. So let me show you what I picked out. So with the help of one of their lovely employees, we picked out this yarn combo, and this is the Gepard Wild and Soft held together with the Gepard Cashmere Lace. So this Gepard Wild and Soft is 40% Wild Tussa Silk and 60% Merino Wool. It is a 50 gram ball, and you get 240 meters in this 50 grams. And I just really like this color. It's color 728, which is called Glacier. It's just this really nice sort of oceany blue and it feels really nice. I've never used a silk and merino blend before so I'm very curious to see how this feels knit up. 
and the cashmere lace. This is my splurge for the weekend. <laughs> I've never worked with cashmere before and you only need only. You need just three hanks for my size for the T number one, so I thought that was sort of an attainable amount to purchase for a project because you do hold it with the wild and soft, so you know it offsets the yardage that you need. But cashmere lace is a 100% cashmere lace yarn. This is a 25 gram hank, and there's 350 meters in this hank. This is color 742B, which is New Wild Sky, and it's just this nice heathered blue, and it's a little bit darker than the Wild and Soft, but I think together they will look really nice in T number one. Now, I'm curious how this will also wear as a t-shirt, because you do have merino wool, you do have cashmere, I mean, there's some silk in there too, so... You know, kind of an interesting fiber combo. I feel like I'm kind of timid when it comes to fiber combinations. I'll just stick with merino and mohair, and that's about as wild as I get with the combos. So this will be new for me in a whole bunch of different ways with yarn, brand, and t-shirt fibers. So I'm excited to cast on this project at some point next year. I mentioned that they had a ton of petite knit accessories there, including all of the like leather bag handles. They had a bunch of tags that you could buy her patterns if you wanted to as printouts and I got her elastic. It's called Keep Your Knit in Shape and it's just the elastic that Petite Knit sells to put in the um, collars and stuff of your sweater so they stay together. Did I need to buy this? Is this an overpriced just piece of elastic thread? Yes, but it has this cute little Petite Knit plastic logo thing that I wanted so. <laughs> I will talk about prices as well. So in Norway, they use the Norwegian Krone and this was 29 Norwegian Krone. As someone from America, the conversion rate is about one to 10. So this 29 Krone object was $2.66 in US. This Gepard cashmere lace was 240 krone, which comes about to $22 in US. And the Wild and Soft was 125 krone, which comes out to $11.47 US. Now, this time around, I did ask for the tax refund forms when I purchased my yarn from the various stores that I went to, and I'm gonna save that discussion for how that went at the end of the video, so stick around if you're curious to learn about the VAT tax refunds. Now, after leaving Frukvist with my happy little bag of Gepard garn in hand, I then walked over to a mall, which is called Glass Magazine, and in this mall is Hyman Husflieden, which has a bunch of different stuff, including yarn and knitting accessories, but they also sell like gifts and clothing, and they had a lot of traditional Norwegian clothing and mittens on sale there as well. So kind of an interesting store. You have to go down to the bottom floor of the mall. It's around a corner, and at first you don't think you're going to in the right place, but then you turn and then you see the yarn wall, and then you know you're in the right place. So they carried a few brands, mostly being Raum Garn, Sanis Garn, and Heels Vog Yarn, and those are all Norwegian yarn brands. Most people know Sandus, most people know Ramagarn. Hillsvog, I've never heard of before, so I was kind of curious to try their yarn. So while I was there, I did pick up this Norwegian wool called Tind, Tinde? And this is a DK weight Norwegian wool, uh, Norse Pelsgarn. And I picked up this color. I don't really have any plans for this, but I just wanted to get something that I knew was like local and new to me. And this is 100% wool. This is a 100 gram hank and you get 260 meters in this 100 grams. This is the color dark brown and there's a lot of darkness going on in this video frame, but hopefully you can see the color there. It's just a nice chocolatey brown. Definitely has a sort of rustic texture. You can see the fibers maybe coming off of the hank so it's got you know some toothiness but it feels like a good hardy wool to knit with this was 152 norwegian krone which comes out to about 13 dollars us so that was all on friday those three yarn stores are definitely within walking distance of each other and on fridays i found that most of the hours for these stores was longer most of them closed at 6 p.m which if you're arriving in the afternoon like we did still gives you plenty of time to get to them before they all close 
and after I did all of my yarn chopping, me and my coworkers went to get a nice salmon dinner at this restaurant called The Salmon, which was right on the water, and it was really good. I was really excited to say that I had some salmon from Norway. So that was the end of the day Friday, and now we'll jump to Saturday. So on Saturday, I then went to Garntopia, which was also one of the most recommended yarn stores for me to visit. It's pretty widely known in Oslo, and I could totally see why, because they had everything. They had every yarn brand that you probably could think of would that would be sold in Oslo. And Garntopia is located in Hellsphere, which is not really close to the city center. It's about maybe a 10 minute subway ride. I kind of lucked out because the hotel that I booked for the weekend was within walking distance of Garntopia in Hellsphere. So I walked there, but I did take the metro to and from like central Oslo to Hellsphere just to get back to my hotel. And I found it was really easy to use. You do have to buy tickets on their app called Router, but I found it very easy to do, very easy to follow the maps and such. So if you are in Oslo and wanna to get to Garntopia, definitely just recommend hopping on the subway down to Hellsphere. So at Garntopia, they had Filkawana, Sanus Garn, Lang, Noro, Rauma Garn, Gepard, Cama Rose, Hypnit Shop. They carried Lamana, as well as some hand dyed options like Hedgehog. They had so many different accessories and notions. They had all the petite knit accessories. I think they carried C knit needles and just an endless amount of patterns. They had a lot of cute kits, which I really liked. Like they had a lot of kits for the petite knit bags where they had the yarn selected. They included the pattern and they also included the little leather strap for the bags. And I think what was so beautiful to me about the yarn shop is that they had, you know, fully stocked shelves with all the colors. So it just looked very full. But they also had Geholtz Uldespindery, which is a Danish yarn brand that I don't really see very often, both in person and online as an American. And they had so much knitting for olive. The knitting for olive display at Garntopia was probably my favorite part of the whole store just because knitting for olive's palette is just so stunning. And to see it all in one place, filling up an entire wall and they had a beautiful basket selection of their silk mohairs. It was a very exciting time. So I finally got my sweater quantity of pure gint that I've been wanting for a really long time. I've knit with it before in a hat, but I really want to try it in a garment. So I picked up one of Petite Knit's new colors called Coco Nibs and it is this beautiful deep chocolatey brown. Now Pure Gint is a heavy DK 100% Norwegian wool. This is a 50 gram ball and within this 50 grams you get 91 meters. Petite Knit just came out with a new color line. So with her color line combined with the regular Pure Gint colors, the possibilities for colors are endless. It comes in like every shade of every color. And I got a sweaters quantity of this. I'm leaning towards making a cardigan, possibly the Eva cardigan, but I'm not really sure. So this might just sit in my yarn collection until I decide, but I'm really excited to use it. It feels very soft and smooth. Uh, Pure Gint has a little bit of a crunch to it, but nothing major. I think it would fit well for a cardigan just because a cardigan you would wear with another layer. I feel like I'm not sure yet if I would want this as a like next to skin sweater, but we'll see. I also got the Pure Gint in the natural tweed color. I got enough of this to make a hat, which would be three skeins, kind of leaning towards the weekend hat, could make another Oslo hat, but I just really like the tweed color. This is just from their regular color line. It's not a petite knit color, but I think that this tweed is just a classic, you know, yellowy cream color with little flecks of black and brown. It's just I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't walk away without getting some of this. <laughs> so one Pure Gint ball at Garntopia was 55 krona. And I apologize. I think before I was saying krone, but if you say the plural, I think it should be krona. So this was 55 Norwegian krona, which is about $5.05 US. So that is such a steal to me because we have Sanus Garn in America. There are a ton of online shops that sell it. I've seen varying prices from eight to ten dollars a ball but i got this for five dollars very excited now funny thing is i've never used knitting for olive merino before i've used all of their other fibers except for their cashmere and their merino so i picked up five skeins of this in wild berries it's this really nice pink i think it's kind of muted 
and I kind of want to get more into pinks to wear so I thought this was a good color to try. Don't know what I'm going to knit with it yet but really excited to have this. One ball of the Knitting for Olive Merino at the store was 99 krona, which comes out to $9.08 US. So after I left Garntopia, I dropped my yarn back at my hotel room, and then I took the subway back to Centrum of Oslo, and then walked around behind the City Hall Square, which has a beautiful waterfront area. It was just really nice landscaping, it was fun to look at the water, and then I headed to the National Musée, which is the National Museum of Oslo. It's mostly an art museum. It was a lot of fun. I got to see The Scream by Edward Munch. They also, at the top floor, had in their rotating exhibitions, had a temporary exhibit called The Importance of Wool, which was really cool. So I stopped by that briefly, and then they have really nice outdoor space at the top of the museum where you can overlook the water. That was also really nice to go on top of and see. So if you are interested in something to do in Oslo that's not knitting related, would definitely recommend the National Museum. Just a little bit ways of a walk from there is the Oslo City Mall. I would say maybe it's like a 20 minute walk, but you walk through a ton of different shops and restaurants, so there's lots of stuff to do on the way. You also could hop back on the subway and take a couple stops over to that area if you wanted to, but the Oslo City Mall is just a mall, but there is a yarn store inside of it called Strikadilla, so I stopped in there, and they carry mostly Sanus Garn. They had some Opal and Lang sock yarns. They also had some drops. They also carried Rauma Garn, Parmin. They had lots of buttons and a couple knitting kits, and they also sold needles by Sanus Garn. So this was a cool shop to stop by. Again, they carry mostly things that the other stores also carry, but the cool thing about Strikadilla is that it is open until 8 p.m. on Saturdays, whereas pretty much every other yarn store that I went to closed at 4 on Saturdays. So if you need to sort of pace out your schedule or you just can't fit everything in before 4 o'clock, it's kind of convenient that Strikadilla is open until 8 p.m. So while I was at Shrikadilla, I was with one of my coworkers who kind of has an interest in learning how to knit. So she picked up some Double Sunday, so I don't have it to show you guys, but the Double Sunday at Shrikadilla was about 75 krona, if I'm correct. So I think that's a similar price to what all the other yarn stores have. So for some reason you need Sanus Garn and it's after 4 p.m. <laughs> and Strikadilla is the place to go. And after I left the Oslo City Mall, I walked over to the Oslo Opera House. At that point, the sun was setting and you can actually climb to the top of it and you have beautiful views of the water and the city. And I just had a nice time sitting up there for a little while as the sun set. And I liked watching all the lights come on in all of the buildings of Oslo. And that concluded our Saturday. All right, now we're at Sunday. So on Sunday, we headed over to the Kronorloka area area of Oslo, which is kind of far from city center. I don't really know how to get there from public transit because we took our rental car up there. In that area is the yarn store called Pickles. Now Pickles was the only yarn store that's open on Sundays, so it kind of was very convenient because it was in a faraway location, so I couldn't really get to it on Saturday if I wanted to, so I'm glad it was open on Sunday. Pickles is a Norwegian yarn brand, and the store kind of reminded me of Knitting for Olive with their displays and the fact that it's just a standalone store that carries their own yarn. I was really pleased with their yarn selection. You know, they had some really nice fibers. They had swatches of all of their yarns with a bunch of different needle sizes, which was cool to see how the fabric changed as the needle size changed. And I ended up picking up some of their Bliss yarn which is a 40% baby alpaca, 40% wool, and 20% mohair single ply yarn. So this is the color marble, which is the color 1000, and it's just this plain creamy white color or off-white color. And I picked this up because it is just so soft. Like, it feels incredible. I can just picture this as like a scarf or a little neck wrap and I just knew I had to get some, so I'm excited to try this out. One ball of this was 102 krona, which comes out to be $9.32 US. 
And then right nearby Pickles, in fact, that same strip of stores, there are a bunch of little shops that carry a lot of handmade goods and locally produced goods. So it was a great little Sunday afternoon shopping, you know, a lot of gifty items and crafty items. So that was really cool. Nearby is also the Sundad's Market, which is the Sunday market. And it's this whole craft fair with a bunch of local artisans that are selling their handmade goods, lots of jewelry. I saw a lot of knitwear, a lot of Norwegian mittens, which I thought was really cool. It was really crowded and it was in that area that I had a ton of knitwear sightings. It was awesome. Like I saw so many people wearing so many patterns that I recognized. I I spotted a porcelain sweater, I spotted a novice slipover, I spotted a sweater that I didn't know the pattern of but I recognized the yarn. It was the We Are Knitters The Wool, like they're very chunky wool and they're like rainbow sprinkle color. It was just really cool to see a lot of people wearing knitwear. I feel like common themes with a lot of the sweaters I saw people wearing were the fuzzy fibers. Lots of mohair, I'm assuming some sort of alpaca, like it feels like everyone was wearing a sweater with some sort of fuzz, so <laughs> that was an interesting observation that I just wanted to share. And that whole area was just really nice place to walk around and explore for Sunday. And that pretty much concluded the Oslo trip, you know, we flew back to Poland on Sunday afternoon and I had a ton of yarn to pack up and bring home. All right, let's talk about tax refunds now. Now, I'm not a resident of Norway, and if you are not a resident of Norway, Sweden, Denmark, or Finland, you're eligible for tax refunds from your purchases in Norway, as long as you bring your goods back unused out of Norway within 30 days. So, when you check out from a store, if your minimum purchase is at least 315 Norwegian krona, you can ask the associate to fill out a tax refund form for you. Some stores partner with companies that process the refunds very quickly, like Global Blue or Planet. Other stores have refunds that I think they process on their own. So you have to get those forms processed through customs at the airport. For me, I didn't spend that minimum at all the stores, but at the stores that I did, I requested a form. It was pretty easy and quick for them to fill out, like the store owners knew what to do. They didn't ask me for any proof of anything, but you are supposed to bring your passport and sometimes they might even ask you for your flight ticket to prove that you are leaving within 30 days, but I wasn't really asked any of that. They just filled out the paperwork and then gave it to me. And then fast forward to me leaving Norway at the airport, I had to process those forms at the service center. I was at the Oslo Torp Airport, which is a smaller airport that is farther away from Oslo than I think like the big Oslo airport. So it was pretty quick for me at the service desk. The service desk at that airport was before security. There was absolutely no line. The woman there was very helpful, knew exactly what to do and, you know, typed up all the info that she needed within 10 minutes and then I was on my way. She did not ask me to show her the goods, although you do have to pack it in your carry-on with the chance that they do ask to show the goods while that paperwork is being processed. And then I went through security with my goods and then there was one form I did have to get stamped at the customs office that's after security. And from then on, two of the forms that were processed through those companies like Global Blue and Planet, they were already being taken care of. I'm supposed to expect my refund back to my credit card within two weeks. The third form that was done directly through the store, I actually had to mail back to the store with the custom stamped on it. So I had to mail that back once I came back here to Poland. So I had to go to the post office and get an envelope and mail that back to Norway. So in Norway, the tax value rate is 25%. And I saw an average return on the refunds to be about 12%. So I only got about half of it back, or at least I'm supposed to get half of it back. I have since seen one refund hit my credit card. I have yet to see the other two. And I didn't really pay any fees, even though I only got 12% back of the total 25%. It's not really considered that they took out a fee. That's just what they refund you. So, I mean, something's better than nothing. And I would say because it's a pretty painless process, Process, I didn't mind it. I can totally see that if you had to wait in a very long line to get your forms processed,
process, then maybe it wouldn't be worth it depending on the value of your goods. But something is better than nothing and I'm glad I went through that experience so now I know what to do if I want to do it again. And that is pretty much everything I can share with you guys about my trip to Oslo. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations for other yarn stores in Oslo that maybe I didn't mention. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.